So, let me... We have made it to episode two of the Struggle Bus Games podcast, and today I bring to you Mr. Matt James, the man himself. Welcome. Well, thank you. First and foremost, I want to say thank you very much for having me. Um, This is the first ever podcast I've ever been on, and I'm looking forward to it, and I'm curious as to what we're going to talk about. Me too, man. That's why I'm just allowing the wine that you brought to uh, help guide the conversation flow. It is quite a good wine for three dollars. I'm very yeah. surprised. The Aldi Special. Uh-huh. Aldi Special. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know, if you shop at Aldi, get the Winking Owl Cabernet. It is just delicious. Three dollars, by the way. It's like. Um, if Yellowtail is right here and that hobo jug wine is right here, the Swinkin' Owl is like right <laughs> in the middle. It's fantastic. So, uh, Matt, what is your background, man? I, I hear whispers on the street about you being a musician. Are these whispers true? Well, my shirt um, well, yeah. has my band name and my name. Uh, so I do have a little band. This is my old band, the Matt James and the Southern Drifters. But my band now is called Charismatic. And we've been doing some good gigs here, you know, in Lafayette and stuff. And uh, I actually started and I started getting inspired by, you know, Andrew, who was on this podcast previously. Yeah. Well... He inspired me to sing, I would say that. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't realize, I thought that y'all had like started up at the same time. Yeah, he was, uh, man, he had done it a few times. I hadn't played in a while, but I remember he was like playing guitar for you, right? During your, uh, whenever yeah. you were playing with your dad. So like even before that time, it was like, we were still in, like in high school. We're like sophomores and, um. Uh, I had just been playing guitar and singing a little bit, and then I started hanging out with Andrew, going to the shop, and uh, mm-hmm. they were like, do you sing? And I was like, yeah, no, no, I don't sing. They're like, not yet. Oh, Matt sings the song, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then so ever since then, you know, they we we kind of just been jamming all the time Hell back in yeah. those days. But the infamous shop. I wish I could have been around for them nights. I was living in like uh, behind B Dubs at that time, so it was kind of yeah. a drive. But uh, yeah, I remember hearing the stories. Y'all getting ripped and uh, chugging a little moonshine out there and well, uh, singing yeah. some tunes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd always sleep over. You know, uh, it was a responsible time, but it was a time for sure. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we all had the same like background. It was like country music. Yeah. And then so we would just jam Hank Williams and then we try to write songs. And uh, there was this one time me and Luke wrote a song in the shop. Oh, nice. And it was a really good song. And then it got lost somehow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y'all, y'all recorded it on y'all's phone or no, something? No, like that's a sad thing. We just wrote it down on a loose leaf piece of paper and mm-hmm. then... Like a week later, we're like, "Hey, where's the where's the lyrics to that song?" Like, I, then we we're talking to Debbie. Like, "Hey, Debbie, you, you seen a loose leaf piece of paper in here? <laughs> like, it's gone. Good, good song, just gone. You know." <laughs> yeah, back whenever I was living out of my apartment, anytime I would like try to to retain anything that I would write, you know. If I had a good little lick that I hadn't written, I would like buzz out my phone and just record it. And like, I think now. Through, through iterations of me having my computers, like multiple computers, I've been saving from my phone on there and I've like yeah. kept the backups of it. So there's still stuff from like, I don't even know, 10 years ago that I've like mm-hmm. recorded on there, but I don't know if I'll ever use it. But it's, it's good to have it though. Like, mm-hmm. and that's the best thing is to like, anytime you get an idea and you're like, oh, this is cool, well, mm-hmm. you can just record it and have it. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure. And like, has there ever been like a song that you had written like a long time ago and you just didn't have the place for it at the time but then you like retained it and then you were able to like use it and make something out of it in the future there has been 
I would say at least one or two like original songs that I did that came from that. It's like, okay, I'd written lyrics somewhere and then it's like, what can I do with this? Mm-hmm. And then I had an old chord progression and then they just merged together. And I was like, that's, that's it. You know, yeah, that was awesome. Um, yeah, I had, um, whenever I was at my apartment, I remember I had written a lick and I think I'd recorded it and put it on Facebook actually. Mm-hmm. And then I want to say maybe like two or three years later, I was committed to writing that that like solo album that i was doing Mm -hmm. and then i i reached back in my memory and i like pulled that riff out and i was like i gotta use this shit for something and then i ended up recording something with it and it was like it fit perfectly i was like man this is you know that's the stuff yeah it's interesting it's like you you just wouldn't think like a song that you know you had written a while back would actually turn into something cool like that you know so uh where you're you're playing in Lafayette these days? Are you still yeah. playing regularly? Uh, so we don't play as much as we used to. Actually, I think um, like I started a band when I was eighteen, and from eighteen to twenty two, which is basically whenever COVID happened, mm-hmm. like we we're playing every weekend. It seemed like then COVID happened, and then it just everything shut, shut down. down, and so we kind of everyone was like rebuilding their bands and like the music scene was rebuilding so it's hard these days to have a consistent band Mm because everyone's playing with everybody and it's still but um and you're uh, you're also getting older which means all your friends are getting older that used to be able to do things so then everybody's starting to get into their like commitments and relationships and jobs (laughs) yeah that's another thing is like (laughs) you know life just happens without you realizing it's like oh wait it's not the same same deal anymore Mm -hmm. you know what i mean um but we had a show uh last night at the grouse room oh what really yeah and it was fun we opened up for this band called pocket chocolate from new orleans (laughs) that's pretty great and yeah it was great like um it was a good turnout good turnout you know it wasn't packed shoulder to shoulder but good crowd and it was a interactive crowd like you know, oh, you, that's awesome. i'm sure you know what an interactive crowd is like they're having a good time and oh yeah you know it was awesome an interactive crowd that is not super big beats a big crowd that's not mm. interactive every time for absolutely. sure absolutely <laughs> it's, it's like you can feel the energy coming yeah. back at you that you're putting out and Great. y'all feed off of each other. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that's almost the reason why we play music in the first place is to kind of get reactions out of people. Oh, yeah. And it's it's awesome having a good interactive crowd. Faux show. I've, I've, <laughs> so <laughs> you being a musician for a while and talking about the interactive crowd, I'm sure that you have stories about the opposite of that right what was like uh what was one of your worst (laughs) shows that you played (laughs) well it's like i really have to tap in and think about it but uh man if you need me to go first i will because you can go first i got one loaded up right here (laughs) yeah yeah go go ahead i'd like to hear this too all right so picture this now this man frequents uh port barry correct that bought us more from time to time i used to go all the time now it's on occasion oh yeah so this wasn't bought us but it was um man what was that the levy landing or something like that levy Levy bar Uh in port barry and man this must have been like 10 years plus back okay so then this was for high octane and we had gotten this show i don't even know how we had gotten in but as luck would have it the i think it was like a couple of days before we played this show they had a badass string of storms roll through port barry (laughs) and flood all of both sides of the levee that this bar was on now when we were driving to this bar they we we were looking on either side of the levee and i mean this is like what a 10 20 Mm -hmm. foot levee right so you can see on either side and 
you can see the houses of the people that were going to that bar were all flooded still on either side. God, <laughs> so like geez. driving up there, I was like, this ain't going to be that great. I can tell already. <laughs> <laughs> Some, Something's just off, you know, seeing all this shit. Mm-hmm. So then we roll up over there and we get, and we start unloading our gear. And I'm looking at all the people and the bar isn't that big. And look, everybody in that bar was pissed off at life obviously because their damn house was flooded <laughs> still and so they were just in there looking at the floor drinking grinding their teeth i was like my god this is gonna be it's gonna yeah. be a rough one boys <laughs> <laughs> so, so we like set up in the corner there's no stage and everybody's like looking at us while we're doing this shit and i can just the vibe is very apparent you know start playing nobody's clapping nobody's you know very receptive of the (laughs) what we're putting out (laughs) and then uh then i'm like all right you know let's uh let's try i'm I'm gonna try and speak with these people you know so i i I myself play try to play an acoustic song Mm -hmm. and uh I'm, i'm sitting there and we had a buddy with us that was playing he wanted to play it too and he's he's really good at guitar but he didn't r- know that song that i was playing and this mm. is one that everybody in that band in that bar you know it was uh midnight in montgomery okay, i was like yeah. trying to bring it back i was like all right i know y'all are gonna jive with this one well he starts playing with us and he's doing a bunch of solos over the whole thing which i mean <laughs> like he didn't know the song so he was trying to improv and everybody knew that it wasn't like that you know yeah and it it was the opposite of it made him even more triggered so then the guy who booked the show was like man look he came up after that song he was like bro look we uh we thought y'all were gonna be different than this i'm gonna just pay y'all 150 bucks like we we promised and y'all could just get out of here and i was like that sounds good to me and so we made we played like three songs and made a God, made some money man. and shot out <laughs> i was about to say i'm surprised that y'all played at levy landing because that's like some that was some pretty rowdy folks yes. like country you know <laughs> I probably guess. on like a good night it probably wouldn't have been like that but yeah. <laughs> there's always fights you know happening over there for nothing really? really yeah have you like witnessed this in person i've only been there one time and i have seen a fight i don't know what it was about but it's like you see that and you're like what am i even doing here <laughs> <laughs> you just leave like <laughs> Um, <laughs> I have this one story though from whenever we played at it's called JC's Bar where's that at? Uh, it's in Paconier that's a real like, that's a real town it's a real town <laughs> it's like where the Silver Slipper used to be um, and this is back when that's it was like, a different owner that's like Arnaville area yeah uh, okay. so I don't know if you've ever been to the Silver Slipper but it's like it's on the road by the silver slipper like if you're going to 190 from the silver mm. slipper it's like a main shot all the way to 190 i don't know i don't think i've ever been there it's just a, a metal building it's a fun bar but mm-hmm. um this was like 10 years ago i was just starting out music and it's only it only been like 30 minutes when we started playing and the owner got really drunk and like <laughs> went to the bathroom and apparently he had fell on the sink and the whole sink falls off the wall and water's like gushing out the bathroom. <laughs> what? <laughs> and so we're on stage playing and we just see a flow of water just come around and it makes a left where we are. And then I'm like, Ethan, you got to move, dude. You about to get shocked. <laughs> like he was just standing there. <laughs> and so we had to stop for like 45 minutes for him to like, oh, I guess, turn wow. off the water and resuscitate the guy yeah (laughs) yeah and like i think they kicked him out that night like they they had two guys carry him out the bar and i never saw him again after that oh my god (laughs) but ever since that happened like we went back up eventually and started playing again and it was hard to pick back up from where you left off because like people just weren't into it after that it was just like like you said no claps like wow but uh (laughs) it's man there's so many each different gig is like a whole different story 
you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. some are good some are bad but it's just the whole process that's just so fun what was like the biggest show that you can remember playing mm, i did this thing well it was like this uh i forgot what it was for but it was like this thing at cowboys Mm. like whoever wins this singing contest and luke did it too yeah i forgot I what it was for mm-hmm. but it's packed for this packed in there like and it was for some singing contest and uh i was like the first dude up i was like all right we got mr matt james yeah and i hate being the first one up because like you can't really oh, you feel can't. the crowd mm-hmm. you know what i mean but there was at least a couple hundred people in there i would say but we we did festivals too with like you know a thousand people oh man that's awesome but the funnest ones are just like up and close like at like a a cool bar or something and people are just reacting to you and your music very well Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yep i've had uh i've had my fair share of uh both sides of the fence for sure i was <laughs> just reminded me of this other show that we played in in uh, baton rouge uh man I don't, I don't even think it was at phil brady's and i don't even think that they realized that we were playing there that night like they must have forgotten that they were having live music mm-hmm. so it was like an afterthought it was like oh all right <laughs> you know so then we started setting up and we were playing with this band i had never heard of and uh then the name of the band was Warblade orphan and we were like asking the dude we were like how did you come up with that name and he was like well uh one of our guys wanted to name the band Warblade, and the other guy wanted to name the band orphan so we just compromised the name of that. <laughs> and then they ended up uh the, the one of the guys was like I don't know how long they had been playing for, but he mm-hmm. like he his signature thing is he would tilt the head of his amp, which is this part, which mm-hmm. has no effect on the actual like speakers coming mm-hmm. out. He would tilt the head back <laughs> as if it would like project sound more out of this thing and really? sound better. Yeah, I was like, wow, what a <laughs> what an interesting technique you have. <laughs> Golly. That is hilarious. <laughs> That's pretty great. But I think there was probably like three or four people there that whenever we played, so that was that was a wash. But it made for an interesting story yeah. just because of the other band. <laughs> Absolutely. What was like? Have you ever had like a um, a big named act that you played with that you're like like bucket list or like man that was that was a big you know big show? Not really. No, we had this uh, uh, this lady at we played at Blue Moon Saloon one time. That's tight. And That's a good joint. It's fun over there. Her name was uh, Valerie Sassy Frass. <laughs> and apparently she's like this well-known like lady. Like she just does her solo thing. And she brings like this projector and yeah. does these stuff in the back. And she just sings her songs, which are like far out there. Yeah. And it's like a whole little thing. But I didn't know anything about her until like I Googled her. And I was like oh okay yeah but it was uh it turned out to be a good night that night but as far as like a big name like you know touring artists I, you know we never really opened up for anybody like that nice yet yeah. not yet not yet hopefully if you're seeing this and you uh hear i mean we'll, we'll post a link to uh, you got like a, a facebook or any yeah, kind of we link. have a facebook page for the band it's uh charismatic and it's spelled k-a-r-a-s-m-a-t-i-c sweet yeah we'll post a link to the uh page and uh if you're watching this in the future and you want to book a show with this man hit him up on that link i'm sure that you'll uh hopefully get some more traction after this That'd yeah be tight. it'd be much appreciated any gig is a blessing for sure what uh so you do the the shows mm-hmm. are you currently working anywhere nine to five so type yes i work for the school board saint landry parish in the it department ah, nice. so i go to all the schools and repair computers or you know smart boards or printers and it's a good job i must say that's awesome man not just a musician he's got some brains about him as well (laughs) 
yeah it's such a great job though because like when i started well actually i started at the school board in the maintenance department so we're just going around like you know doing a couple things cutting grass i'd go with the carpenters or the ac guys and then uh they're like hey matt what do you think about trying out the it department for a week I was like, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, sure. And I remember my first week in there, I didn't know anything. And I went with this guy and he was like teaching me stuff. But also he was like talking to me as if I knew everything he knew. And I was like, mm. dude, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> like, But um, eventually it was like, well, hey, Matt, actually, you want to stay in the IT department? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. But I caught on to the job really quickly because basically it's all repetitive stuff that could could possibly be something that went wrong with, mm-hmm. let's say, a computer problem or a smart board or a printer. So once you so, get a basic knowledge, you kind of understand it. What's a smart board? Is that like a chalkboard type thing? It's like, a- so a smart board... <clears throat> Is basically like this humongous TV size board that's like touch screen that a lot of the teachers have to, you know, teach the class. Mm, that's pretty cool. But with that comes all these little small problems that arise and you just have to, Damn. you know. That's interesting to think about. So it, it kind of replaces a chalkboard, right? That's like yeah. the goal of it. Yeah, and like you, they have the uh, the digital marker, so you can like write on it, erase, and all that without actually writing on the board. Yeah. So sometimes it'll like wig out, and you have to go reset yeah, it or something. Basically, man, that's an interesting concept, right? I bet you, like, <laughs> people in like the nineties and shit back in the day if you told them that you'd be having like issues where you couldn't like use a conventional chalkboard correctly anymore yeah. because it's going haywire that's yeah. that's interesting like first world <laughs> problems oh i know and everybody's using smart boards in all the classrooms but wow. like when i'm really frustrated i'm like in my head i'm thinking why can't we just go back to <laughs> yeah. chalkboards you know <laughs> man that's an interesting problem to have and they still got, like, some schools still have old technology, like those humongous dinosaur desktops or PCs. And mm. you have the humongous 90s TV that was, like, this wide. And deep with yeah. that little screen on. Yeah, they I wheel them in on a cart. A lot. Yeah, that's interesting. They had one at uh, one of the high schools we went to, to. It was, like, on this shelf. And it was one of those big old 90s TVs. I don't even know the name of them, but... It was me and my boss, and they're like, <clears throat> "Can y'all take that down for us?" I'm like, yeah, probably so. You know, we I mean, both lift shouldn't be yeah. no big deal. We got two ladders, and we tried to just move the TV, and it didn't even budge. We're like, "I don't think we can do this <laughs> you know, like, without breaking bones. It's not possible." How big was it? It was like, I want to say from about where I'm sitting to where you're sitting, and then just probably to the back wall right there oh wow yeah. it was like humongous <laughs> and it weighed at least i want to say a couple hundred pounds at oh, least 500 wow. pounds damn that's crazy yeah i mean if we'd have got it off that shelf we'd have just broke both our arms <laughs> your bicep would have just snapped off yeah. the bone like on the preacher of- curl videos where they're just both at the same time <laughs> that is so disgusting i hate those videos like and it's people curling way too much weight and they just <laughs> my bicep just shrank something's wrong yeah you just see both their biceps go all the way up to their shoulders <laughs> Like, I'm so terrified. Like, I work out, too. But I'm so terrified of getting an injury of that. Yes. Like, golly, that would be horrible. Those are bad. But the uh, the ones that get me are the are the uh, the deadlift ones where that happens. Because that's like, you can't, you wouldn't even think that you would be able to injure your damn bicep in yeah. a deadlift like that. So that makes me, like, paranoid yeah. about that type of stuff. Right. <laughs> it's all like the grip, they say. Like, if you're holding a uh i don't know what they call this it's uh, like the reverse grip re- reverse grip and all the load is on a bicep it'll just mm-hmm. but I, I think if you're 
I mean, you'd have to lift so much for that to yeah. tear. Like, you'd have to be pushing, like, 700, 800 pound deadlifts. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? That was my preferred one, because otherwise, it'll, like, slip if you get in, if you hold it like that. Yeah. I, I always prefer it like that. Now, I did, you ever uh, mess around with the hex bar very much? Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that, the hex bar. Uh, one time, I was at the UL, I think it was a UL gym, and they had a normal one, mm-hmm. like a normal one with the knurling, and it was like a you know standard issue one and they had a one off to the side that i i guess many people didn't use very much and i was i, I got there late and somebody had already grabbed the normal one so i was like oh i'll just use this one that nobody uses mm-hmm. i don't know why they don't use it <laughs> and i go up and i load up i think like three plates on either side so it was like what 315 something mm-hmm. like that and uh <laughs> i gotta pick it up and I get it like halfway, and I realize that the damn uh, the handles mm-hmm. were like freely able to rotate. Really? So then, whenever I picked it up, they like torqued out of my damn hands <laughs> midway through, and dude, that shit hurt my hands and my wrists. <laughs> and I was like, ah. This is why nobody uses it. I was like, what is the point of that even? I was about to, what is the purpose of having a hex bar that has rotating handles? It would just rotate until the shit was like right at your fingertips and just like pop through. I was really? Like, Man, there, you have to have like impeccable grip strength to... Uh, is to that what that's that for? Just like a grip it training might be, yeah, bar might or something? Be. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It's a trap bar, just like coaxes you to use it and just injures mm. you. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, where you uh, where you lifting at these days? You're looking pretty swole right there. So, I can tell. Well, thank you. Um, I still go to Cajun Fitness. I've been going there for like ten years now, and uh, it's like in those ten years, the gym scene has changed so much like you got the tiktokers in there now yeah you're like when i first started going it was all about like how much you lifted how big you were and all this and now it's just i don't even know what it's about i've never subscribed to the the (laughs) modern fitness stuff you know what i mean it's just about being in that location and making a tiktok now yeah it's like we at the gym boys that's good enough it's (laughs) about having broccoli hair (laughs) The mirrors around here are fire, dog. Can't believe we haven't come here earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I have I have a meme that I'm going to post right here uh, to show you exactly what, what, is, what my, I'm thinking about. Right now. It's so good with that. I'm going to show you after. But, yeah, I've, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's, uh, it is interesting. I, I miss that, like, generation iron, you know, look yeah. of people. And my my dad used to have you you seen those pic, the posters in his uh mm-hmm. his gym yeah, with I did. Arnold and Ronnie Coleman and all that stuff. Swolges. I want to say I got some of my best workouts in that gym though, like your dad's gym in his shop. Yeah, because it has all your basic things you need, and mm-hmm. then all the like pictures of everybody for motivation mm-hmm. and then it's like a hundred degrees in there without the ac so you're sweating and yeah it warms you up already it's like a better workout for some reason and you don't have to worry about like people you can just do whatever you want you don't have to worry about people on any kind of oh i want to hit chess oh there's the line there yeah that's another thing and like uh another re- I, I work out at my house and i have very minimal weights but a big part about that that i enjoy is just being able to um you don't have to drive anywhere and you don't have to like worry about all right i'm on a schedule i gotta go and do this later like it's it's great have you ever like uh are you are you living in your own house right now are you like renting still so yeah i live with a roommate and we live in karen crew and we're renting out of place which i mean it's very cheap for karen crew it's like we're only paying 400 plus a month yeah that's awesome and it's in a nice area of karen crow um yeah i was about to say because eventually whenever you end up getting a house or you might be able to do it right now but you start like accumulating weights mm-hmm. you'd be surprised because what the the gym you're going to obviously has the machines and all that stuff mm-hmm. which is great um but what is it like 50 bucks a month something like that so i'm going through my insurance which like knocks it down to like 12 bucks 12 bucks a month but i'm paying like 30 something because i'm at like 
anytime two and then planet fitness it's like ah, on the gotcha. same plan but i have like three gyms that i can go to man that's awesome that's a great uh great it's insurance. a good that's deal job then. yeah it's uh, oh, i think yeah. it's blue cross blue shield insurance Damn, that does tight. that it's like this fitness your way that's what it's called what? fitness your way and you just go to like they have a list of all the gyms that they like work with i guess for that and you just go to the gym like hey i want to like set up an account Wow. And it gives you a code. And uh, it's been pretty nice that way. But And they uh, give you a free subscription to any kind of anabolic steroid that you want you know, <laughs> monthly. You just get a little vial I'm of trend in. Yeah, you know? I'm sure if I would dive in deeper, <laughs> it might be more to it. You know, <laughs> We'll supply you with tests as well. Just sign up right here. <laughs> like, great, you're all signed up. Now do you want to take anabolic steroids? Yeah. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome man i wish uh i wonder if we have any kind of stuff like that i don't even know if i'd go still just because it's like a drive from here um we used to go to cajun fitness whenever we were living in bruce R, and I, I do miss that cause, like, yeah that's a nice one i've been there the machines and stuff man you can't beat that yeah yeah you're out in the sticks right here oh yeah man <laughs> I'm looking a little sweaty right now just because i uh i spent the last couple hours setting up a iteration number two of the hog trap in the back i've been baiting them up i got uh i had been fermenting some corn in some like hawaiian punch and you get that cheap yeast like baker's yeast from the uh from the store and you just dump that in there and let it sit in the mm -hmm. sun and get all nasty and sour and you dump that in the back and uh man it it looks like i took my tractor back there and like tilled up all back there it's crazy wow, really they've been going to town back there so uh I, pr I primed up the area and uh man they're back there so i went and said I, I got some uh hog panels from tractor supply a couple days mm. ago and i went back there and we're gonna see how it works it's like a it's a c trap so it's basically like it's not quite a circle but mm -hmm. built it as a square but basically you end up having like couple panels that overlap like this and then okay. they can squeeze their way in but then they can't it'll shut right behind them and they can't squeeze their way back out so you're trapping like wild hogs mm -hmm. oh, okay hopefully if it works we shall see yeah <laughs> but I mean, that's a uh, good eating right there if you can yeah. do it and it's like man a lot of free meat yeah and if you can trap them like consistently i mean one one hog will last you what you think like a month or two three yeah. possibly uh it just depends on how big because they got some I'll put it to you this way I, had you seen that picture of that hog that i shot back here no I, I never did so i had i shot a hog with my crossbow like i want to say like a year and a half ago something like that and uh when it came out it was there was like some water you know it had just rained so the the weds the the woods were still kind of wet and uh i i had heard my neighbor on his atv going through the woods behind my place and so i could tell you know all right he's he's moving back there and then i heard a bunch of it sounded like football players stomping through the water back there i was like oh great he, he must be like coming this way but it was like a lot of you know foot work going on i was like what the hell is this and then all of a sudden i see there was like i want to say 10 or 12 hogs come out right in front of me like 20 yards away from me and then the same i'm looking at this going on right here mm. and then in my neighbor's area there was like another 10 or 12 so i'm like looking at 20 or so hogs in mm -hmm. my field of view and i hadn't even like put my actual eye on any hogs <laughs> prior to this so it was like blowing my mind seeing mm -hmm. this and this one pops out that i i had seen this one and i saw the backs of a few in the woods still but i couldn't see the whole body and the one that was in front of me that i ended up shooting i thought it was like you know a juvenile right mm -hmm. because of the size compared to the big ones that i saw mm -hmm. so i shot it i go down and i'm looking at this thing and it i'll post a picture of it it was probably 80 pounds which is not very small it's pretty good size yeah. good eating for sure but it was like bigger than my dog and <laughs> whenever i saw how big it was and then remembering how big the other one was compared mm -hmm. to that 
that thing was probably like as big as this table. Cool. It was. I mean, I'm talking like the back was like this. So you know that thing was like three, yeah, or, like, three or four hundred pounds. If I would have shot that thing, I would have to drag it out the back with my tractor. <laughs> There would be no way <laughs> that I couldn't even brought it back with a four wheeler like that. <laughs> that would have filled up probably that little freezer back there for sure. I mean, that's a lot of meat. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, and you just don't, you don't see it. You know, it's like oh, you got woods back there, but it's like oh, you don't you don't realize there's so much activity going on animals yeah. and man, it's crazy. Y'all have like deer back there and stuff too. Mm-hmm. You ever thinking about shooting a deer back there? Oh, yeah. There? I, shot, uh, I shot a good-sized doe this past season, and uh, we ate on that thing for a while. Made a bunch of ground meat, mm-hmm. burgers. It's fantastic. Definitely helps whenever uh, inflation is going through the roof <laughs> in the groceries. I was like, I was telling my work piece the other day, I was like, I get anxiety about buying, like, sh- cheese, like, shredded mm-hmm. cheese and stuff. You really? Because <laughs> it's like. I mean, so you haven't stepped into the uh, the family role yet, right? Not so yet, then no. you you have uh, the luxury of not having to buy food for an entire family <laughs> just yet. But my kids eat a lot of cheese, right? They eat a lot, of, <laughs> <laughs> they eat a lot of freaking string cheese and all kind of stuff. So then you, it's not that you're just buying one pack and it's gonna <clears throat> last you a week. That pack of string cheese is gonna last you a few days and the shit costs like six bucks for like a little thing like Golly. this. Yes. Shout out to uh, all the parents out there that are having to feed their kids through uh through the inflation times. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, you're, you're probably feeling it whenever you go to, uh, what is it, McDonald's and all that stuff. and Or Popeye's. We went to Popeye's the mm. other day, and I was like, oh, yeah, we, you know, Popeye's, no big deal. Buy, buy everybody enough stuff to eat from Popeye's. It was like 40 bucks. Really? It's like, what the? What the <laughs> it's supposed <laughs> to be like fast food. It's like a sit-down yeah, restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> stuff used to be cheap at like the chains <laughs> like that. Like even McDonald's. Like if you go there, there's like the... I guess it's called the McDouble, but it's like a cheap burger for yes. like a buck or two. It used to be right, yeah. Now it's like, oh, let me get a McDouble. All right, that'll be uh, $5. It's Is like it really? $5. Oh, yeah, I for sure remember when that was like a dollar. You, you could get like three of them like, and just... Oh, man. Yeah, for like five bucks, get three <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah, we went to... Uh, Gulf Shores a couple weeks ago, and that was another one where I was like, "Oh yeah, all good. We're just gonna get a little breakfast before we hit the road for the yeah. kids or whatever." I get like four of those uh, McGriddles and a couple uh, hash browns, and it was like almost thirty bucks. Really for Gosh. breakfast for McDonald's? I was like, "You gotta be shitting me!" But nope, they were not. They were bending me right over and extracting <laughs> money from me. That's what they were doing. <laughs> Yeah, I've been lucky <laughs> in the food department because, um, like, my dad retired a year. Well, last June he retired, so he's always cooking something. No, oh, yeah. all the, like, and so when I get off for lunch, I go to my parents' house, which is right by the school board office, and there's always like lunch, and he always cooks, you know, supper and all that, and I've been really enjoying it, you yeah. know. That man, you uh, take advantage of that as much as you can because it definitely. What what is the uh, what's like one of the favorite things that he cooks that you, you like? It's hard to say because like he he'll just mix stuff together and it's just like the most odd thing you ever heard of. But if I had to pinpoint it to like something he cooks regular, it'd probably be. He's always making like some kind of pasta really yeah like it'll be a shrimp pasta with vegetables in it or like a beef pasta or he's always barbecuing wings and like his wings are really good man barbecued wings yeah they're just hearing that is like making my senses go (laughs) on i do like me some barbecued (laughs) wings we used to uh does he inject them or anything or he just like marinates them i think he just marinates them oh yeah because they have like a bunch of um I don't know what the sauce is on them, but it's like almost an, a half an inch worth of sauce on the wings. But it's like, it's oh, good yeah. stuff, you know? Do you ever watch him, dude? Because, like, does he, uh, does he toss them? Does he, like, barbecue them and then toss them in the sauce and then put them back on so that it'll, like, congeal on there? 
I don't, I'm going to have to ask him, honestly, because I don't ever watch him cook or see what he's doing. That way I can learn. Yeah. He just cooks stuff and he's like, hey, I got some food. It's ready. I'm like, okay, well, I'm hungry. Uh huh. But I need to learn from him, like, how to cook good stuff because, like, if I'm buying food for myself, it's just basic stuff. Like, I'll just buy, like, bananas, like, fruit, and then meat and just snacks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you do any kind of cooking at your place? No, not really. I'll just eat, like, snacks because I'm always going to my parents to eat. You know what I yeah. mean? So I buy enough food just if I'm hungry, you know. You ever uh, you ever tried to cook anything? Well, no. no? I, I realize just by talking to people, it's more of just, like, experimenting different things uh-huh. and what works. It's not really, like, a set, like, oh, you got to do this and this. It's just, like, we'll try this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Man, I love, so far, this is two out of two podcast episodes that have in, ended up where we're talking about food and cooking, mm-hmm. and I, I am not sad about it. I, I love <laughs> I love cooking, and I love food, and it's it's great to uh, be, like, that is like a connection point for, like, almost everybody, because everybody eats food, Absolutely. right? <laughs> so everybody <laughs> eats food. Some the, more than others, but, you know. Um, Yeah. For sure, man. We gotta have we gotta have a little cook sesh because I I like to teach and uh, I'd love to teach you how to cook some stuff because yeah. like you'd be surprised. That's eventually if you end up you know moving into your own place or whatever and you become to where you want to uh, you know you want to cook things yourself and you, you're trying to be on a budget. That's like the best way to save money is like being able to cook like especially like if you're uh, meal prepping and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's why I did that butternut squash and all that really? stuff. Really, bake a bunch of like sweet potatoes or butternut squash so you got your like carbs and then you end up cooking like mm-hmm. a bunch of chicken or whatever yeah and uh the meal prepping man but uh you'd be surprised how little you would need to do to cook something that's good and it's gonna last you a while and it's like good quality protein you know yeah like we got some uh t-bones on sale the other day from super one i think mm-hmm. it was like 12 bucks for three fat t-bones like that sure, right I mean. and that's like it's got a filet mignon on one side of it so that's mm-hmm. like really good you know yeah and uh you know pan fry that stuff up i mean i say pan fry you know i've had the oil and all that stuff and cooked it real fast and uh i, I would cut it up in this like primo ramen that i mm-hmm. stumbled upon which is the uh shin black they have the shin red which is kind of spicy but the shin blacks where it's at you get it from walmart so you're talking mm-hmm. about ramen super easy you just mm-hmm. put that on the stove boil it up real quick and you cut that steak into the ramen and you God. can like cook you up some eggs and put that in that there sounds good dude top tier and i mean obviously you go to like Izumi is going to be, you know, the real deal. But this mm-hmm. stuff is pretty good if you're on a budget. And yeah. I mean, it's I think it's probably what, like two bucks a bowl or something like that. Three bucks a bowl if you're making it with all that stuff in there versus like sixteen dollars a bowl for yeah. something similar. Wow, that is the power of cooking at your house if you know what you're doing for yeah. sure. <laughs> and it's not too like advanced to where you have to look up recipes. Like you can just throw something together like eggs oh, noodles, yeah. and stuff for cheap you know survive on eggs yeah. that's what we're doing around here <laughs> that's why we got all them chickens yeah <laughs> yeah my uh my uncle has a farm in washington and he has about i'd say 12 chickens so they mm. get about six a day but they're not eating six eggs a day, so it's like it keeps on piling up, and they have a bunch of eggs in the refrigerator. They gave you any? Yeah, they give us some, like, every month. Nice. You know? And you can tell the difference from a actual egg from a chicken versus, like, going to Walmart and buying those eggs. Like, uh-huh. just the yolk and the... <clears throat> it's like a dark orange yolk. Yeah, it's... And I hear it's, like, better for you. Mm-hmm. You know? Rich with nutrients. That's mm-hmm. our. That's how ours are. We'll do... Um, I used to... I mean, I still do. Um, they... <laughs> grow sunflowers and uh feed them the sunflower heads but they recently i tried planting a bunch just recently and they ate all the sunflowers that were on the ground before they got a chance to germinate so i'm probably gonna have to pass again and do another round of it but man that that definitely helps good protein nutrients oh, yeah. for them for sure 
you uh you looking to get some chickens and stuff eventually you trying to live that farm life you know you... that's the goal i um i kind of like how you're set up out here like you don't have too much property to where it's unbearable to maintain it yeah you have like just enough to where you can do all these things you know mm -hmm. and you know you had your house and you're set up and you put a lot of work into it and that's inspiring and that's something i'm trying to get myself uh set up eventually but right now it's like i'm just trying to save as much as i can to put into that you know yeah for sure that housing market's crazy yo oh it's crazy are you uh, like actively thinking about getting a house eventually or is that are you in that yeah, stage yet i'm saving right now and i'm hoping that in the next couple of years i can like get some property mm -hmm. you know and like ideally i'd want to get something with property and like a house on it and if the house needs work you know you can do the work on it but like just getting property and starting out from basically nothing that would take like a lot of money to do yeah that. to build something new yeah you would uh you'd try to do something like like this where it's like uh rural or would you want something that's closer to the city something rural like this yeah. you know and even Andrew has a nice setup too. Oh, like, for sure, yeah. You got the trailer and the land, and you know, that's just he got a good deal on that too. Mm -hmm. That is, is a, a big thing, man. Because a lot of people want to live close to the city. I mean, I don't. I'm not knocking anybody. There's pros and cons, obviously, to both sides. Uh, the internet is fantastic. The closer <laughs> that you are to the city, I'm missing that for sure. <laughs> it took me, I think, when uh, whenever I was uploading that first episode of this show, I was. It took me literally all night to upload that. Really? Yes, it was multiple. I think it was like at least six or seven hours. Yeah. Because I went to bed and it had been five hours since I had clicked the button to upload it. So it was. <laughs> it takes a little while, you know, but we're making it happen. <laughs> yeah. But um. The, the the bang for your buck though is uh is very different. So whenever we were living in Broussard, not even Lafayette or Youngsville, Broussard, mm -hmm. we sold our house. We bought it for uh, x amount of dollars, and then we sold it for a good chunk more. But um, the same price of that house uh, is basically what we bought this house for, and the house that we were living in previously was not on very much land right yeah. i think it was you know it was like a lot in the middle of a subdivision it was a brick house but it was older mm -hmm. um but that just goes to show you like it was the same price as the house we're living in now and this house has more square footage and you know close to six acres versus like a lot in a neighborhood so that's like the amount of bang for your buck difference that you can get oh yeah it's crazy it makes you want to uh, very much contemplate because I mean, the thing with land is like, you know, they're, they're not making any more of it. So if you can grab a slice, mm -hmm. and I mean, in time, you know, there's people who have bought up slices of land in like Youngsville way back in the day, mm -hmm. and that used to be what just cane fields and stuff yeah. like that. So then, you know, you buy you a chunk of land, you don't have to do anything with it, and it's basically just a store of value. Mm -hmm. and I mean, if you had a chunk of land in Youngsville, right, you know, that you bought 20, oh, 30 years ago, you, you could sell it sell right that now. For so much money. <laughs> and it's, oh. it's really just like, uh, like these home building companies that want to just buy up as much land and like build a bunch of homes on it. Uh -huh. You know? So we're seeing a lot more of that now, like just everywhere. Yeah. Um, like anytime you see woods being cleared out somewhere, it's like, oh, it's coming, mm -hmm. you know? Somebody cashed in. Yeah. <laughs> what I've seen a lot lately, too, is uh, like a solar farm. There's one in, uh, what's the name of this town? Like Plaisance area. But it's almost like three miles of just these what? solar panels on a farm. Dang, that's pretty cool. And whoever owns all that land is making a ton of money just by having the solar panels on their land. Oh, yeah. It's like a new age, like, oil derrick they uh, yeah. put on there. That's yeah, cool. it's crazy. Huh. Well, why don't we take a little break real quick? All right. So, uh, back from the break right here. Back from Man, the break. 
we were we were just talking about that home ownership and all that stuff and jog my memory about that uh water heater bullshit that i had to go through just recently did you hear about that Uh uh-uh oh boy this is one of the woes of uh owning your own home you don't have to mess with this type of stuff whenever you're renting but man so the other day uh abby my wife was like oh man okay we're we're having less hot water than we used to and it's noticeable and i was like mm, sure it's not the kids having used up all the hot water you know <laughs> hoping that was something you know <laughs> some mundane like that and then eventually it i was i was very uh I could I couldn't deny it anymore. It was definitely uh, less hot water than we usually have. So I was like, all right, I gotta figure out what the hell's going on. So I got up in the damn attic. And I'm looking around through through the uh, I pull off the panels and I'm looking at the different uh, you know there's insulation inside of the water heater and I'm pulling it out mm-hmm. on the top thermostat and uh, there, there's like rods that go inside of the the water heater. And the back of them is sticking out so you can see like the electronics of it and stuff. So I got my multimeter and I'm like testing the electronics and then, you know, the top one's good. So then I open up the bottom panel and immediately I'm like, Hey, there's something definitely wrong with this bottom one. And I'll pull out the insulation and the insulation is like wet. And there's like the way that a water heater works is there's an inside tank and then there's a layer of insulation and then there's like an outside shell and there's not supposed to be any water mm-hmm. inside where the uh, insulation is and that was the first <laughs> tip that someone was definitely screwed up so then there's like a six inch you know gap between the bottom of the tank and where the the thermostat panel is right there and, and i'm pushing down I'll, I'll put some pictures i'm pushing down on the insulation and there's water like up to my thumb so really six inches of water inside where there's not supposed to be any water and basically where that rod goes into the water heater the i guess it corroded over time to tell them how old the water heater was but it, it popped a little leak and just ended up filling up right mm-hmm. there until the water came up to where the electronics were and created an arc and it fried the thermostat wow. and like burn a hole in the insulation good enough to like catch the house on fire pretty much really? I mean, there was like high uh current going through these wires and burning insulation and uh, that's what happened. So we were running on <clears throat> one uh, thermos, you know, one rod doing all the work, and that's why it was getting cold quickly. So then I was like, okay, well, wasn't a simple fix. Now I got to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do. So I go and buy a new water heater. Come back. That was five, six hundred bucks right there for yeah. a brand new water heater. I come back, and I'm like, all right, how the hell? This thing is not light. I mean, it's probably like. 70 or 80 pounds without anything in it Mm -hmm. i mean the thing is like as big as i am and the entrance to the attic is literally it's got a half inch of clearance on either side uh where this where the water heater if i pushed it directly vertical it would pass into the attic through that opening Mm. and there's no way that I was going to be able to just one, you know, myself push it directly up because I'd have to have somebody <laughs> else in there. And also I would have had to have taken the ladder off of the attic opening to be able to get this thing in there. So that shit wasn't happening. So then I ended up like cutting a hole in my ceiling and just rerouting the piping <laughs> down to this thing and just put it in place right next to my, 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 uh, washing machine and that's where it stayed yeah, you know yeah. <laughs> had to do a little handy work myself but it works man we got some freaking mm-hmm. hot water finally <laughs> <laughs> shit was giving me some high anxiety this here's another here's a pro tip for the audience and for you if you ever have to do anything with plumbing <clears throat> with i got two pro tips anything with thread connections like if you got this thing had like threads where i had a you know metal tubing Mm -hmm. coming off that i was able to screw on top of the water heater just putting teflon tape is not enough around the threads use they make this shit it's like putty it's called pipe dope put that shit around the thread i had a buddy of ours come from down the road uh and he came in clutch with that he he had some 
and it made all the difference in the world because I had I had hooked it all up, mm-hmm. and I was like, all right, we good. And then there was a little drip every time we'd use the damn mm-hmm. hot water, and I was like, this cannot be like persisting tormenting my brain right here i was just <laughs> the anxiety was like 11 up to 11 on this shit i was ready for it to be done and it just kept dripping i was like man surely over time it'll fix itself it'll heal mm-hmm. itself right no kept dripping until i ended up having to do something about it but yeah that's what it is you put that pipe dip on there and it'll seal it right up second pro tip i didn't know this shit before going into it so you know th- you're trying to fix the water heater right you got mm-hmm multiple days of your family not having hot water while you're trying to fix this problem right mm-hmm. so that did that gets old pretty quick not having hot water i don't know about y'all taking cold showers and all this stuff but we were heating up water in a pot on the stove like pilgrims <laughs> trying to take baths and bathe these kids and stuff so I, I had to figure out something pretty quick and do it all in a timely manner so then i'm freaking uh, thinking that I got all of the PVC figured out and I had even gone as far, you know, I, I, I took measurements of the PVC as so I go and pick it all up and I'm like, all right, got this shit licked, come back. And I had noticed that, um, the cold water side, you know, it was a, a normal white PVC like you're used to seeing. And then the hot water side, it was like this tan PVC. And I thought that it was just old and mm-hmm. that's what made it off color that ain't the case it is c pvc for the hot water side did mm. you know that that shit existed no i didn't either and that is specifically hot water pvc because if you had cold water pvc on that side mm-hmm. it would it would heat up and like expand the pvc and make it all act all wonky and that's obviously not good so I found that out on one of the nights when I thought that I was going to have it all hooked up and we'd be able to. Mm-hmm. You know, that was like the second night of us not having hot water. So then I was like, I can't believe this shit is happening. Now the hardware store is closed mm-hmm. again. And I got <laughs> another night of not having hot water, but I got to figure it out. Also, the glue, the PVC cement that you use uh-huh. for that is different. It's a different than the cold water. You have to have so, a specific kind for the hot really? water side. Yep crazy so i mean the one for the hot water like the cold water doesn't affect the hot water glue it's right. just and you can use the hot water uh pvc glue on the cold water one but you can't use the cold water one on the hot water one because it was just like i guess it's it gets too hot and yeah and it's separate you know pretty hmm. crazy tips of the trade you wouldn't have otherwise gotten if you weren't <laughs> listening to this show right now <laughs> Yeah, uh, it sounds like a, a lot of work you put into that. <laughs> oh, for sure it was. God, that sh- I can't, man. It's it's different whenever you have like homeowner woes like that because it's something that you know if you're like the head of the household, you gotta fix that shit because you got like people counting on mm-hmm. you to fix it. Oh man, it's a different kind of anxiety for sure. So how would you learn how to fix plumbing? YouTube. YouTube? <laughs> hey, YouTube has everything you got to know, you know? For sure. I had a, a pipe under my house bust from a fr- from the freeze, and that was... I don't think I had to consult YouTube for that one, but that one was a bitch, too. I had to, like, crawl under the crawl space. Mm-hmm. The crawl space was so tight, I had to exhale to get my <laughs> chest cavity underneath my house. That's what we're talking about right here. And I had to crawl army style on my stomach like 20 feet to the where the break was and go and like it was it had had frozen and uh what it was was there's like this house has an add-on side so where the exterior wall used to be they just left the hose bib attached right there and it's still connected to the water and then there was like another run that was still connected but it was like buried underneath the house so there was like two hose bibs and a, a bunch of line that was still connected to the main water source mm. that I would have never known about. And I, you can't see it from the outside. It's like literally in the middle of the floor of the living room. Really? Unbelievable, right? So if you got problems with that, you got to crawl all the way back yep. under there. And, get and the- I never knew about it. And it froze. And I was like super diligent about like opening up all the, all the hoses and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, how the hell did this happen to me right here? I was so mindful <laughs> 
but uh yeah man that was another thing i had to go up there freaking I, I ended up just cutting it and capping it right there mm-hmm. but it was it was wacky i was like i'm not about to pay three hundred dollars to have some dude come and like do exactly what i know i can do with a 50 cent part mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that's the difference that's the oh, know-how man that's crazy it, it works with cooking you can save money with cooking and you, it works with plumbing if you know what you're doing you can save some dough for sure yeah <laughs> And if you do it on the weekend, you gotta call a plumber. They're gonna charge you so much. Oh, yeah, more. you're looking at like five hundred bucks, oh, and that's yeah. and knowing that it was a fifty cent part that would fix the problem, and you'd have to pay five hundred bucks for somebody <laughs> else to come and do it. That's ridiculous. Oh hell no, I ain't about to do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's the power of YouTube. If there's anything that you need to learn about. It's like free. It's like you just watch how to do it. Oh, yeah. You know? Have you learned anything from YouTube? I've learned a couple of things, actually, related to my job. Do tell. Learned songs. Yeah. Well, about the job. um, So when it comes to the IT field, there's like so many levels of stuff that go on. I'm sure you know because, you know, you work in, uh, what is it, coding? Mm Mm-hmm. And there's, like, the basic troubleshooting of, like, PCs and stuff like this. Then there's networking. Then there's cybersecurity. There's, like, all these levels. Mm-hmm. That cybersecurity is a big one for sure. It's a big one. And it's very important because, like, so many people can just easily get hacked. Do y'all have, like, like uh, regular tests where they, like, send y'all a bunk email and you have to, like, yeah. report it? So, funny story about that. My boss is the one that sends out all the fishy emails to all the employees. And for some reason, like, we sent it to him and he opened it. <laughs> I was like, come on, dude. You know, he just wasn't thinking. Yeah, He's so busy. That's but, pretty great. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... <clears throat> There's so many levels to like the IT field, but all of them are very important, you know. And I think the one that is very tricky for me is like networking. Mm. Like if a whole network goes down, it's like, okay, well, <clears throat> well, why did this happen? Where do you start to like fix it? And it's yep. just, but there's like, we have like this training stuff that the school board pays for. It's like a website. You just log in and there's like free training videos, but. Yeah, that always interested me because, like, I deal, I work with computers, you know, mm-hmm. like a high level. He, I work with computers. He good with computers, you know. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> the overlap is that I've never really worked with IT stuff. Uh-huh. So then that is all just like a gray area to me. And uh, I've heard of like crazy situations where you'd have like a network issue. And uh, there's something about like a creating a loop. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the network and it's that's a loop like one, back yeah and that's like one of the hardest things to try and figure out because it could be anywhere somebody just yeah. had an accident like plugged the wrong ethernet that's, into the that's what it thing. starts from like a teacher or somebody will see oh well, this ethernet cord's unplugged let me just plug it back right here mm-hmm. and it's a loop back and then the whole network just crashes for like that's until crazy. we figure it out you know what i mean <laughs> like where's the loop back you know yeah, and then nothing like looks wrong from the surface. Yeah, you just, you'll never tell. In. You almost have to go to the switch and just like, okay, well, no, this isn't oh, going back man. to this. <laughs> but we had a situation the start of the school year. Like my years are based off of school years now from August to May, basically. Mm. But this last August, we had this virus that, you know, just completely shut down our network again. Wow. And um, we had to actually get the state involved. So we had the state guys who were, like, building back our network and, like, everything. What? Oh, man, I'm, something is jogging my memory about that. I can't remember if we, like, heard about that or, like, helped with that at all. But, yeah, continue, where, where did it start? Did somebody open up a bad email or something? That started from... Um, it, was, it was, like, over the weekend. Like, we get back one day, and a lot of people can't sign in to their desktop Uh, and then we're like okay well i can sign in i'm good and then we like looked further into the situation someone had like got somebody's account information mm. and downloaded a bunch of files that had gotten out to everywhere how did they get the uh, account info i don't know 
I, that, that's what we didn't we couldn't figure out who got hacked or whose account was available mm-hmm. but i think it all stems from like maybe a fishy email that somebody like put their information into yeah probably so because they do that they'll they'll say this is from the it department like confirm your password and all this and yeah. people actually do that like they don't think and they give their password away got them and i think somebody actually just fell victim to that and we got hacked I know that we had uh, we had an incident at our office where a guy he like <clears throat> thought that he was I don't know if he clicked on a bad link or how it happened but ended up you know he he clicked on something and it made it to where <clears throat> like whatever he opened had a macro in it or something that it instantly ran and started auto forwarding all customer emails to this other uh email address and then Mm. auto deleting or sending the ones that he was getting to the trash so then he to him it looked like he wasn't getting any emails Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what alerted him but it only alerted him after like i want to say maybe a day or two Mm -hmm. of it having intercepted emails and stuff And it ended up intercepting an email that was like a payment thing from a customer, and they ended up, you know, paying the the hacker like thirty G's. I want to really? say from that. Yeah, did they get Crazy. that money back? I, I have no idea. I, th- I think that I'm not sure if we got it back, but yeah, it was just like eye opening uh, experience for sure. So then that's kind of I think that was like the catalyst for them really starting to buckle down on the multi-factor authentication and yeah um, we have that too the two-step verification uh, and all that and then like testing and putting in place all the uh the, the ways to report and stuff like that mm-hmm. it's crazy there's like we had one of our guys that ended up uh you know af- i think i'm not sure if it was after that or before that but we had a division in our in our company that ended up um you know, spinning up like uh, a security branch that mm-hmm. just started dealing in, in cybersecurity. And mm-hmm. then um, they, the guy ended up going to a company that did strictly cybersecurity. But yeah, it's like a whole, if you if you wanted a job in just cybersecurity, that's like a oh, very golly. niche but whole thing, you know? Yeah, it's very, <clears throat> it's very important to have cybersecurity these days, especially that technology is so just it's it keeps on advancing and developing to new levels mm-hmm. and it's so easy for somebody to get hacked i mean we all get those foreign people call us like hey this is at&t uh i love to mess with them so much they call all the time <laughs> it's crazy like that's their job i guess do you ever get called by these people offering you health care and all that stuff yeah do they do they say hello Angelica? Do they call you Angelica or anything like that? It's always some. It's not that name, but it's always some completely wrong name. Yeah, they. It's for me. It's I've been getting the same calls like that. I want to say for probably like seven or eight years, maybe more, and it is literally always Angelica really? or Angelique. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering <laughs> if like an Angela or something has the same name as me, but I always I always troll them. It's always great. <laughs> they they were calling me like, hey, is this Kevin? <laughs> so mine is they call me Kevin, uh-huh. and I'm just I wonder if somebody like messed with me and put my number uh-huh. and signed me up for something and said my name was Kevin. <laughs> Because, dude, they would call all, hey, Kevin, is that you? Yeah. And it's a real person. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm not Kevin. <laughs> do, they, do they end up being like, well, okay, it's not Kevin, but do you want some insurance? Yeah, like, yeah it's like that's their like, main point. We're like, oh, well, now, now that you're on the phone, you're not Kevin. Yeah. Uh, what a great segue. You could just do that for anybody yeah. with anything that you want to sell. <laughs> it's like props to those people for trying very hard in their career, but... I mean, you gotta get people's names right at least if yeah. you want to succeed. <laughs> like, if they would say, "Hey, Matt," then I'd be like, "Okay, well, they know my name." A little bit believable. Yeah, I'll think about sending you five hundred dollars worth of Steam gift cards now. <laughs> yeah, all we need is your credit card information. It's like I'm not giving you my credit card. I'm not <laughs> like. Uh, so we're at the segment of the show where I typically ask the guest 
what is your favorite video game of all time? Huh. Or it, it doesn't have to be just one either. What has been the most influential that you've played? Well, I can... Uh, I'm going to take us back like 10 or more years ago when I started playing games. Oh, please do. Um, I think my favorite video game of all time is Call of Duty Black Ops, the first one, because of the like the, the story zombies. and the oh. zombies. Like you had this crazy story uh, and it, it was like it was non no it was fiction. Um but it was like this guy went insane and he was the one that killed JFK. That was the main part of the story. Yeah, that's cool. And then after that you have zombies, which are the best zombies ever. Um so that's that's my all time favorite game, but going back to like the old wrestling games, SmackDown versus Raw, like oh six to oh nine. That was on like PlayStation Two. PlayStation Two. Yeah. Me and my brothers would play that nonstop and like we would take it to the extreme. Like if we beat <laughs> one another, it was like we'd want to fight in real life. Like, come on. <laughs> Freaking choke slamming each other on the couch. <laughs> but um uh, those are my top oh my two, but there's this cool game out there called, uh, it was like a baseball game called Blitz the League. Yeah, we were so, talking about that in the, the last episode. Yeah, Really? Was, oh my God, that was the one on uh, Xbox 360. Yeah, it was so crazy. And I remember playing that game, like we went to my great grandma's house, who was, she was probably in her 90s, and she started watching us play the game. <laughs> Like, the first second, I, like, charged the pitcher and started beating him. She was like, what the hell? This shit is violent, son. <laughs> oh, it's a nice baseball game. What the hell? <laughs> but Damn. most of the games that I, I've enjoyed involved, like, violence to some degree. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I definitely remember Black Ops, the mm -hmm. first one. That's whenever. I think I. I used to play that on a lot. I played the multiplayer. I don't think I ever played the single player of it, but um, that was the one that I had had finally gotten like a TV set yeah. up in my room, wall mounted, and I used to play online a lot. Of that yeah, game, so you sure. know the maps like Nuketown and all that. Oh, that's where that one started. Yeah, yeah. that was the oh, best map man. ever of any Call of Duty game is yep. Nuketown because everybody knew every single corner. Yep, and it so wasn't the, that big. I remember I would start off like as soon as the timer popped, I would just throw a grenade over the top yeah. of the first the house that you're at because yeah. chances are to land on the other side and uh -huh. kill somebody immediately yeah that's the cool oh, thing man. about that map is like you know it so well so whoever wins was actually the better team it wasn't out of like oh the map was this so that's why we lost no like the they, better man's gonna win in nuketown they had like time. little uh rc cars with c4 on them huh? and uh -huh. yep i remember that shit and you try and like you'd be running away from them and they just blast you Dude, that used to get me so mad. Those little <laughs> things they would plant, and you would just run, and, <laughs> and you watch your kill again. <laughs> uh, the glory days. Yeah, we. The I never played too many wrestling games on um on PS2, mm -hmm. but I played a lot of. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like the main wrestling game. It might have been like literally WrestleMania on N64. Yeah. I think it was like a black cartridge. And uh man, we played the shit out of that one. That was the one where you could like pull uh like weapons out of the crowd mm -hmm. and just like beat the piss out of your your teammate or whatever. Yeah. And uh <laughs> I remember like it was with them old N64 controllers, and if you <laughs> held the analog stick to the to any side while you were laying on the ground, your dude would j just not get up. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, would, I would, like, pretend, like, me and my cousins would play it, and he'd smoke me in the head with, like, a baseball bat <laughs> with barbed wire on it, and I would just lay there for, like, a good couple minutes, and I'd be like, bro, you straight up knocked me out. I can't yeah. get up. <laughs> and he would just be, like, smashing me with it. <laughs> Dude, that was a fun thing <laughs> about those games. Like, you could do the craziest thing. Like, they'd have you'd have a cage match. You'd be fighting on the cage, and you can slam somebody through the cage, and it looks like they're dead for like five <laughs> minutes. Like, and the crazy thing is, they used to do that in real life. Oh, like, yeah. 
I'm sure like everyone sees those amateur <laughs> wrestling videos. <laughs> that it's is my so favorite. <laughs> it's crazy what they do. <laughs> Where do you see the most of these uh, videos? Is it somebody in particular that sends you a lot of these on Instagram? <laughs> like every every <laughs> once in a while, I get a video on Instagram from Mr. Jacob Morgan <laughs> right here, and it's of like these amateur wrestling guys who they don't make any money, by the way, and they're sacrificing their bodies to do the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> And they obviously are injured after that. <laughs> it's <laughs> completely unhinged. No oh. thoughts about safety. There was one, I think, uh, what was that one? This They had this guy, like, his back was in, like, a complete straight position. <laughs> Somebody jumped off the top <laughs> rope and stomped his back. And you can see his back make a V, like... I was like, wow. and that was like a big dude that jumped yeah. up that thing. I mean, he was at least two hundred forty pounds. <laughs> I mean, just the things they do. There was one that I saw. I wish I could find it, man. It was it was gold. The dude, like the person that was initiating the move, probably had no thoughts about his own safety, <laughs> let alone the person that he was pulling the move off on. And they were on top of a cage match. And, I mean, from the ground, it looked like they were, like, 20 feet up or at least 15 feet up. God, man. And this dude had this other guy, and he, he flipped him over to, by his head to where the guy was, like, behind him, and he mm -hmm. flipped him over. So his whole body was, like, perfectly in the vertical position at the full arc of the flip really? and flipped this dude off of this cage like that and him and the other dude flew off and just <laughs> smashed on the ground i mean they were both like rolling around holding their back screaming <laughs> like, that's real pain <laughs> yeah. i was like what what's the point man <laughs> there's no like, way that either of y'all is gonna be walking away from that <laughs> yeah. even if there's cushion on the ground that still hurts like a lot <laughs> here's your expired gift card to denny's boys y'all did a good good job tonight <laughs> i think these dudes are taking like things to make them not feel pain <laughs> there's no way you just do that like just load up on aspirin before you go out oh yeah I had a buddy, uh, we used to go to that the gym on the uh, Corette Farms, the Anytime right there. Mm hmm And, uh, you know, every, everybody's got, like, when you're younger, you ego lift, right? You're trying <laughs> to just get the damn PR, and I'm guilty of it. Like, we all, mm -hmm. you know, everybody goes too, through it. Yeah. And uh, we, this guy that we used to lift with, he was like, I am getting, I think, I think it was like, 275 he was trying to get on bench flat bench mm -hmm. and he had messed up his shoulder some kind of way and like <laughs> you know leading up to that day he was he would always complain <laughs> about it but he still would train stuff and then he rolled up one day and he was like i ate you know however many x amount of aspirin and i'm getting this fucking real really? today <laughs> <laughs> and he sat down on that bench and he got it but I'm pretty sure his shoulder is like got some serious mobility issues from that one day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like every lifter at some point, like we all start wanting to like, oh, I want to lift heavy. Yes. And then at some point you get older, it's like, nah, it ain't about all that. <laughs> I want to be able to walk. <laughs> yeah. like I'm, I'm all about mobility and, you know. <laughs> I want to be it's able like, to touch my face and not hear a bunch of cracking noises and all my joints <laughs> on the way up. There's a certain point in your lifting career that everything completely changes from lifting heavy weight to just oh, like, man, you know, functional movements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. The de I think deadlifting did that for me because, like, I remember. You know, that was the one lift where I could really start getting heavy with it. And mm -hmm. uh, I think I got 425 God, uh, as my max. It was, it was a good bit. Um, the only way I was able to achieve it was through doing the sumo style. Yeah. And that should have been a sign right there. Like, I didn't realize that sumo, sumo style puts a lot of strain on your hip muscles. Yeah. And knowing that now i probably would not have done it because after that 
for a while. Like it's gotten better obviously since then, but I mean, mm-hmm. I'm talking about months after I was feeling it in my hips. I was like, man, my hips feel like they just felt like rusty. It felt like it just took extra effort to like move them and they were they felt yeah. old or something, like worn down and I was like young, you know, that yeah. shit wasn't supposed to be happening. So that kind of prompted me to not be lifting so heavy. And I think it did something to this knee right here for sure. Yeah. Because uh, just, it just hadn't been the same since, you know? Yeah. I actually injured, or not, I don't know if it's an injury, but I kind of messed up one of my hip muscles by, I was working in the plumbing department for the school board. Mm-hmm. And I was stuck in like a sand hole. Like you, you can't just come out. Your, your foot's stuck. And I was trying to pull myself like, out. Like actual quicksand? It was like five feet in the ground. Holy shit. So it's like the clay and the mud mix, and it's like you can't uh, yeah. just. And so I was trying to pull it, felt something pop. <laughs> but like for three months after that, every time I'd sit like this Indian style, my hip would just cramp up, and I'd have to hurry up and sit oh, straight yeah. like this, and then. The dreaded pop. It's like, yeah. oh, something, something irreversible just happened. I'm yeah. not sure of it yet, but. You know, it's funny that you mentioned deadlifts, though, because a lot of those strongman guys are coming out saying, like, deadlift, it's just not worth the injury risk that you have Mm -hmm. trying to lift, you know, something that's only a one rep max. Yeah. Like, you can tweak so many, like, your lower back, knees, like you said, your hips. For sure. I felt it. For, yeah, I've had some back injuries that they didn't last super long, but I felt it. I was like unable to move correctly for a couple of days because I could like tweak the nerve or something on my yeah. back. Not so great. Yeah. Well, man, I'm just so happy that we could get you on the show, man. It's yeah. been it's been great talking to you. It was a great great time. I want to give a quick shout out to my boy Jake right here and his game Radio Silent. Hey, have you played it yet? I haven't played it because I haven't set up my PC yet, but I listened to the, um, the audio logs. Like the audio log, yeah. And that is just awesome. The whole, the whole idea behind it of like this you know, like log, like you, somebody's just showing up and, and saying something and like keeping it on audio. And then as it goes on, it's somebody else. And then yeah. eventually that, I don't know the evil guy's name. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, I can't remember his damn name right now. The uh, the winking owl got me. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to shout it out because I, I think that the storyline behind that and plus the actual gameplay that I saw, yeah. you know, is just awesome. And I do plan on playing the game one day. Oh, I just, I just remembered. It, it was Dr. Kane. Dr. Dr. Kane. Yeah. So you, you, uh, you finished all of them? Yeah, I listened to the whole thing. Uh, that's awesome. It's just so crazy how you came up with that. So I wanted to give a shout out to that. I appreciate that, man. The geniusness behind it. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely appreciate that. You know, the... um. That Dr. Kane character, the name of it, I uh, I got it from uh, this movie that I had never heard of, but it's called um, The Mouth of Madness. And uh, it's got that guy, you know, the main guy in um, Jurassic Park, Grant, doc, uh, Dr. Grant? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, He's okay. the main guy in that in that movie. And I had never heard it. And I love that actor. And it's actually mm-hmm. fantastic. The movie Mouth of Madness. You ought to check it out. I think, um, I can't remember the, the guy who, uh, John Carpenter. That's the director. But uh, yeah, the, the the main bad guy in that movie was Doctor Sutter, or no, 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 it was just Sutter Kane, mm-hmm. and he was like a writer. And I, I uh, took, you know, paid homage to that movie by naming the bad guy in mine uh, Doctor S. Kane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's that's where that came from. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you actually finished the logs, man. Yeah, man, it was. Appreciate you almost that. can't stop listening because. Each each log makes you want to listen. Like each time it, you hear the the thing click in. Were you able to um, relate? Like that's that's what really what I wanted the um, the the main bad guy. I wanted you to be able to relate to his story through uh, you know because it's one thing to have a bad guy that's just a 
evil without a cause. Yeah. But with him, it was like you could kind of sympathize with his. Yeah. It's almost like you don't want to label him as the bad guy. Yeah. But like just the stuff he's doing is like uh, very yeah. questionable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I haven't put it on this channel yet, but I'm, I'm I'll put the that video on this channel too, so people can check it out. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. And as soon as I get my PC up and going, man, that's gonna be the first game I probably get. Hell yeah! Well, yeah. maybe after we we are done with this uh, this video, you could play a little bit on a computer since you're That'd here, be awesome. man. Awesome! Yeah, I would get to test it out right Hell here. Hell yeah! Well, cool, man. Appreciate you coming by and look. Yeah. This is like a living journal of your existence right here. So maybe in like months time we can yeah. check back and see what you're doing absolutely man thanks for having me and you know anytime you want to have somebody else on and you just want me to like bring winking owl i'll, I'll do that too hell yeah appreciate <laughs> that but well, no i'm looking forward to coming back hopefully with some other stories of my journey in this life so excellent well cool man peace out peeps peace